Late antiquity is a periodization used by historians to describe the time of transition from classical antiquity to the Middle Ages in mainland Europe, the Mediterranean world, and the Near East. The development of the periodization has generally been accredited to historian Peter Brown, after the publication of his seminal work The World of Late Antiquity 1971. Precise boundaries for the period are a continuing matter of debate, but Brown proposes a period between the 3rd and 8th centuries AD. Generally, it can be thought of as from the end of the Roman Empire's crisis of the 3rd century c. 235–284 to, in the East, the Muslim conquests in the mid-7th century. In the West the end was earlier, with the start of the early medieval period typically placed in the 6th century, or earlier on the western edges of the empire. The Roman Empire underwent considerable social, cultural and organizational changes starting with the reign of Diocletian, who began the custom of splitting the empire into eastern and western halves ruled by multiple emperors. Beginning with Constantine the Great, Christianity was made legal in the empire, and a new capital was founded at Constantinople. Migrations of Germanic tribes disrupted Roman rule from the late 4th century onwards, culminating in the eventual collapse of the empire in the west in 476, replaced by the so-called barbarian kingdoms. The resultant cultural fusion of Greco-Roman, Germanic and Christian traditions formed the foundations of the subsequent culture of Europe. The general decline of population, technological knowledge and standards of living in Europe during this period became the archetypal example of societal collapse for writers from the Renaissance until recent times. As a result of this decline, and the relative scarcity of historical records from Europe in particular, the period from roughly the early 5th century until the Carolingian Renaissance or later still was once deprecatingly referred to as the Dark Ages. This term has been abandoned by historians. In historical scholarship of the last half century, the late West Roman Empire, the early Byzantine Empire, and the early Middle Ages are increasingly being unified in the periodization of late antiquity. Topic: <laughs> Terminology. Topic: The term spatantique, literally late antiquity has been used by German-speaking historians since its popularization by Alois Riegel in the early 20th century. It was given currency in English partly by the writings of Peter Brown, whose survey The World of Late Antiquity 1971 revised the post-Gibbon view of a stale and ossified classical culture, in favor of a vibrant time of renewals and beginnings, and whose The Making of Late Antiquity offered a new paradigm of understanding the changes in Western culture of the time in order to confront Sir Richard Southern's The Making of the Middle Ages, the continuities between the later Roman Empire, as it was reorganized by Diocletian r. 284 305, and the early Middle Ages are stressed by writers who wish to emphasize that the seeds of medieval culture were already developing in the Christianized Empire, and that they continued to do so in the Eastern Roman Empire or Byzantine Empire at least until the coming of Islam. Concurrently, some migrating Germanic tribes such as the Ostrogoths and Visigoths saw themselves as perpetuating the Roman tradition, while the usage laid antiquity suggests that the social and cultural priorities of classical antiquity endured throughout Europe into the Middle Ages, the usage of early Middle Ages or early Byzantine emphasizes a break with the classical past, and the term migration period tends to de-emphasize the disruptions in the former Western Roman Empire caused by the creation of Germanic kingdoms within her borders beginning with the Photis with the Goths in Aquitania in 418. Religion One of the most important transformations in late antiquity was the formation and evolution of the Abrahamic religions, Christianity, Rabbinic Judaism and, eventually, Islam. A milestone in the rise of Christianity was the conversion of Emperor Constantine the Great r. 306 in 312, as claimed by his Christian panegyrist Eusebius of Caesarea, although the sincerity of his conversion is debated. Constantine confirmed the legalization of the religion through the so-called Edict of Milan in 313, jointly issued with his rival in the East, Licinius r. 308 by the late 4th century, Emperor Theodosius the Great had made Christianity the state religion, thereby transforming the classical Roman world, which Peter Brown characterized as "...rustling with the presence of many divine spirits." 
Constantine I was a key figure in many important events in Christian history, as he convened and attended the first ecumenical council of bishops at Nicaea in 325, subsidized the building of churches and sanctuaries such as the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, and involved himself in questions such as the timing of Christ's resurrection and its relation to the Passover. The birth of Christian monasticism in the deserts of Egypt in the 3rd century, which initially operated outside the episcopal authority of the Church, would become so successful successful that by the 8th century it penetrated the church and became the primary Christian practice. Monasticism was not the only new Christian movement to appear in late antiquity, although it had perhaps the greatest influence. Other movements notable for their unconventional practices include the grazers, holy men who ate only grass and chained themselves up, the holy fool movement, in which acting like a fool was considered more divine than folly, and the stylites movement, where one practitioner lived atop a 50-foot pole for 40 years. Late antiquity marks the decline of Roman state religion, circumscribed in degrees by edicts likely inspired by Christian advisors such as Eusebius to 4th century emperors, and a period of dynamic religious experimentation and spirituality with many syncretic sects, some formed centuries earlier, such as Gnosticism or Neoplatonism and the Chaldean oracles, some novel, such as Hermeticism. Culminating in the reforms advocated by Apollonius of Tyana being adopted by Aurelian and formulized by Flavius Claudius Julianus to create an organized but short-lived pagan state religion that ensured its underground survival into the Byzantine Age and beyond, many of the new religions relied on the emergence of the Parchment Codex bound book over the papyrus volumen scroll, the former allowing for quicker access to key materials and easier portability than the fragile scroll, thus fueling the rise of synoptic exegesis, papyrology. Notable in this regard is the topic of the Fifty Bibles of Constantine. Topic. Laity versus clergy topic. Within the recently legitimized Christian community of the 4th century, a division could be more distinctly seen between the laity and an increasingly celibate male leadership. These men presented themselves as removed from the traditional Roman motivations of public and private life marked by pride, ambition and kinship solidarity, and differing from the married pagan leadership. Unlike later strictures on priestly celibacy, celibacy in late antique Christianity sometimes took the form of abstinence from sexual relations after marriage, and it came to be the expected norm for urban clergy. Celibate and detached, the upper clergy became an elite equal in prestige to urban notables, the potentes or dinatoi Brown 1987, p. 270. The rise of Islam Islam appeared in the 7th century and spurred Arab peoples to invade the Eastern Roman Empire and the Sasanian Empire of Persia, destroying the latter, and, after conquering all of North Africa and Visigothic Spain, to invade much of modern France. On the rise of Islam, two main theses prevail. On the one hand, there is the traditional view, as espoused by most historians prior to the second half of the 20th century and by Muslim scholars. This view, the so called out of Arabia, Thesis, holds that Islam as a phenomenon was a new, alien element in the late antique world. Related to this is the Pyrrhon thesis, according to which the Arab invasions marked, through conquest and the disruption of Mediterranean trade routes, the cataclysmic end of late antiquity and the beginning of the Middle Ages. On the other hand, there is the modern view, associated with scholars in the tradition of Peter Brown, in which Islam is seen to be a product of the late antique world, not foreign to it. This school suggests that its origin within the shared cultural horizon of the late antique world explains the character of Islam and its development. Such historians point to similarities with other late antique religions and philosophies—especially Christianity—in the prominent role and manifestations of piety in Islam, in Islamic asceticism and the role of holy persons. In the pattern of universalist, homogeneous monotheism tied to worldly and military power, in early Islamic engagement with Greek schools of thought, in the apocalypticism of Islamic theology and in the way the Quran seems to react to contemporary religious and cultural issues shared by the late antique world at large. Further indication that Arabia and thus the environment in which Islam first developed was a part of the late antique world is found in the close economic and military relations between Arabia, the Byzantine Empire and the Sasanian Empire. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Political Transformations. 
Topic. The late antique period also saw a wholesale transformation of the political and social basis of life in and around the Roman Empire. The Roman citizen elite in the 2nd and 3rd centuries, under the pressure of taxation and the ruinous cost of presenting spectacular public entertainments in the traditional cursus honorum, had found under the Antonins that security could only be obtained by combining their established roles in the local town with new ones as servants and representatives of a distant emperor and his traveling court. After Constantine centralized the government in his new capital of Constantinople dedicated in 330, the late antique upper classes were divided among those who had access to the faraway centralized administration in concert with the great landowners, and those who did not—though they were well born and thoroughly educated, a classical education and the election by the Senate to magistracies was no longer the path to success. Room at the top of late antique society was more bureaucratic and involved increasingly intricate channels of access to the emperor. The plain toga that had identified all members of the republican senatorial class was replaced with the silk court vestments and jewelry associated with Byzantine imperial iconography. Also indicative of the times is the fact that the imperial cabinet of advisors came to be known as the consistorium, or those who would stand in courtly attendance upon their seated emperor, as distinct from the informal set of friends and advisors surrounding the Augustus. <laughs> Cities The later Roman Empire was in a sense a network of cities. Archaeology now supplements literary sources to document the transformation followed by collapse of cities in the Mediterranean basin. Two diagnostic symptoms of decline, or as many historians prefer, transformation, are subdivision, particularly of expansive formal spaces in both the domus and the public basilica, and encroachment, in which artisanal shops invade the public thoroughfare, a transformation that was to result in the souk. Burials within the urban precincts mark another stage in dissolution of traditional urbanistic discipline, overpowered by the attraction of saintly shrines and relics. In Roman Britain, the typical 4th and 5th century layer of black earth within cities seems to be a result of increased gardening in formerly urban spaces. Rome went from a population of 800,000 in the beginning of the period to a population of 30,000 by the end of the period, the most precipitous drop coming with the breaking of the aqueducts during the Gothic War. A similar though less marked decline in urban population occurred later in Constantinople, which was gaining population until the outbreak of plague in 541. In Europe there was also a general decline in urban populations. As a whole, the period of late antiquity was accompanied by an overall population decline in almost all Europe, and a reversion to more of a subsistence economy. Long-distance markets disappeared, and there was a reversion to a greater degree of local production and consumption, rather than webs of commerce and specialized production. Concurrently, the continuity of the Eastern Roman Empire at Constantinople meant that the turning point for the Greek East came later, in the 7th century, as the Eastern Roman, or Byzantine Empire centered around the Balkans, North Africa, Egypt and Carthage, and Asia Minor. The degree and extent of discontinuity in the smaller cities of the Greek East is a moot subject among historians. The urban continuity of Constantinople is the outstanding example of the Mediterranean world. Of the two great cities of lesser rank, Antioch was devastated by the Persian sack of 540, followed by the plague of Justinian 542 onwards, and completed by earthquake, while Alexandria survived its Islamic transformation, to suffer incremental decline in favor of Cairo in the medieval period. Justinian rebuilt his birthplace in Illyricum, as Justiniana Prima, more in a gesture of imperium than out of an urbanistic necessity. Another city was reputed to have been founded, according to Procopius, panegyric on Justinian's buildings, precisely at the spot where the general Belisarius touched shore in North Africa, the miraculous spring that gushed forth to give them water, and the rural population that straightway abandoned their plowshares for civilized life within the new walls, lend a certain taste of unreality to the project. In mainland Greece, the inhabitants of Sparta, Argos, and Corinth abandoned their cities for fortified sites in nearby high places. The fortified heights of Acrocorinth are typical of Byzantine urban sites in Greece. 
In Italy, populations that had clustered within reach of Roman roads began to withdraw from them, as potential avenues of intrusion, and to rebuild in typically constricted fashion round an isolated fortified promontory, or raca. Cameron notes similar movement of populations in the Balkans, where inhabited centres contracted and regrouped around a defensible acropolis, or were abandoned in favour of such positions elsewhere. In the Western Mediterranean, the only new cities known to be founded in Europe between the 5th and 8th centuries were the four or five Visigothic victory cities. Recopolis in the province of Guadalajara is one, the others were Victoriacum, founded by Leo Vigild, which may survive as the city of Vittoria, though a 12th century re foundation for this city is given in contemporary sources. Lugo id est Lucio in the Asturias, referred to by Isidore of Seville, and Ologicus, perhaps Ologitus, founded using Basque labor in 621 by Suanthila as a fortification against the Basques, modern Olite. All of these cities were founded for military purposes and at least Recopolis, Victoriacum, and Ologicus in celebration of victory. A possible 5th Visigothic foundation is Bayara, perhaps modern Mentoro, mentioned as founded by Recaird in the 15th century geographical account, Kitab al Rad al Matar. The arrival of a highly urbanized Islamic culture in the decade following 711 ensured the survival of cities in the Hispania into the Middle Ages. Beyond the Mediterranean world, the cities of Gaul withdrew within a constricted line of defence around a citadel. Former imperial capitals such as Cologne and Trier lived on in diminished form as administrative centres of the Franks. In Britain, where the break with late antiquity comes earliest in the 5th and the 6th century, most town cities had been in rapid decline during the 4th century during a time of prosperity until the very last decades of the century, well before the withdrawal of Roman governors and garrisons. Historians emphasizing urban continuities with the Anglo Saxon period depend largely on the post Roman survival of Roman toponymy. Aside from a mere handful of its continuously inhabited sites, like York and London and possibly Canterbury, however, the rapidity and thoroughness with which its urban life collapsed with the dissolution of centralised bureaucracy calls into question the extent to which Roman Britain had ever become authentically urbanised. In Roman Britain towns appeared a shade exotic, observes H. R. Loyne, owing their reason for being more to the military and administrative needs of Rome than to any economic virtue. The other institutional power centre, the Roman villa, did not survive in Britain either. Gildas lamented the destruction of the 28 cities of Britain, though not all in his list can be identified with known Roman sites. Loin finds no reason to doubt the essential truth of his statement. Classical antiquity can generally be defined as an age of cities. The Greek polis and Roman municipium were locally organised, self governing bodies of citizens governed by written constitutions. When Rome came to dominate the known world, local initiative and control were gradually subsumed by the ever growing imperial bureaucracy. By the crisis of the 3rd century, the military, political, and economic demands made by the empire had crushed the civic spirit, and service in local government came to be an onerous duty, often imposed as punishment. Harassed urban dwellers fled to the walled estates of the wealthy to avoid taxes, military service, famine, and disease. In the Western Roman Empire especially, many cities destroyed by invasion or civil war in the 3rd century could not be rebuilt. Plague and famine hit the urban class in greater proportion, and thus the people who knew how to keep civic services running. Perhaps the greatest blow came in the wake of the extreme weather events of 535-536 and subsequent plague of Justinian, when the remaining trade networks ensured the plague spread to the remaining commercial cities. The end of classical antiquity is the end of the polis model, and the general decline of cities is a defining feature of late antiquity. Topic: <inaudible> Public building. Topic: In the cities, the strained economies of Roman overexpansion arrested growth. Almost all new public building in late antiquity came directly or indirectly from the emperors or imperial officials. Attempts were made to maintain what was already there. The supply of free grain and oil to 20% of the population of Rome remained intact the last decades of the 5th century. It was once thought that the elite and rich had withdrawn to the private luxuries of their numerous villas and townhouses. Opinion has revised this. They monopolized the higher offices in the imperial administration. What they were removed from was military command by the late 3rd century. Their focus turned to preserving their vast wealth rather than fighting for it. 
The basilica which functioned as a law court or for imperial reception of foreign dignitaries became the primary public building functioned in the 4th century. Due to the stress on civic finances, cities spent money on walls, maintaining baths and markets at the expense of amphitheaters, temples, libraries, porticos, gymnasia, concert and lecture halls, theaters and other amenities of public life. In any case as Christianity took over many of these buildings which were associated with pagan cults were neglected in favor of building churches and donating to the poor. The Christian basilica was copied from the civic structure with variations. The bishop took the chair in the apse reserved in secular structures for the magistrate—or the emperor himself—as the representative here and now of Christ Pantocrator, the ruler of all, his characteristic late antique icon. These ecclesiastical basilicas e.g., St. John Lateran and St. Peter's in Rome were themselves outdone by Justinian. S. Hagia Sophia, a staggering display of later Roman, Byzantine power and architectural taste, though the building is not architecturally a basilica. In the former Western Roman Empire no great buildings were constructed from the 5th century. A most outstanding example is the Church of San Vitale in Ravenna constructed circa 530 at a cost of 26,000 gold solidi or 360 pounds of gold. The collapse of city life in the East was delayed, though negatively affected by the plague in the 6th, until the 7th century and was result of Slavic invasions in the Balkans and Persian destructiveness in Anatolia in the 620s. City life continued in Syria, Jordan and Palestine into the 8th. In the later 6th century street construction was still undertaken in Caesarea Maritima in Palestine, and Edessa was able to deflect Chosros I with massive payments in gold in 540 and 544, before it was overrun in 609. <laughs> Sculpture and art As a complicated period bridging between Roman art and medieval art and Byzantine art, the late antique period saw a transition from the classical idealized realism tradition largely influenced by ancient Greek art to the more iconic, stylized art of the Middle Ages. Unlike classical art, late antique art does not emphasize the beauty and movement of the body, but rather, hints at the spiritual reality behind its subjects. Additionally, mirroring the rise of Christianity and the collapse of the Western Roman Empire, painting and freestanding sculpture gradually fell from favor in the artistic community. Replacing them were greater interests in mosaics, architecture, and relief sculpture. As the soldier emperors such as Maximinus Thrax R. emerged from the provinces in the 3rd century, they brought with them their own regional influences and artistic tastes. For example, artists jettisoned the classical portrayal of the human body for one that was more rigid and frontal. This is markedly evident in the combined porphyry portrait of the four tetrarchs in Venice. With these stubby figures clutching each other and their swords, all individualism, naturalism, the verism or hyperrealism of Roman portraiture, and Greek idealism diminish. The Arch of Constantine in Rome, which reused earlier classicizing reliefs together with ones in the new style, shows the contrast especially clearly. In nearly all artistic media, simpler shapes were adopted and once natural designs were abstracted. Additionally hierarchy of scale overtook the preeminence of perspective and other classical models for representing spatial organization. From around 300 early Christian art began to create new public forms, which now included sculpture, previously distrusted by Christians as it was so important in pagan worship. Sarcophagi carved in relief had already become highly elaborate, and Christian versions adopted new styles, showing a series of different tightly packed scenes rather than one overall image usually derived from Greek history painting as was the norm. Soon the scenes were split into two registers, as in the dogmatic sarcophagus or the sarcophagus of Junius Bassus the last of these exemplifying a partial revival of classicism. Nearly all of these more abstracted conventions could be observed in the glittering mosaics of the era, which during this period moved from being decoration derivative from painting used on floors and walls likely to become wet to a major vehicle of religious art in churches. The glazed surfaces of the tesserae sparkled in the light and illuminated the basilica churches. Unlike their fresco predecessors, much more emphasis was placed on demonstrating a symbolic fact rather than on rendering a realistic scene. As time progressed during the late antique period, art became more concerned with biblical themes and influenced by interactions of Christianity with the Roman state. 
Within this Christian subcategory of Roman art, dramatic changes were also taking place in the depiction of Jesus. Jesus Christ had been more commonly depicted as an itinerant philosopher, teacher or as the good shepherd, resembling the traditional iconography of Hermes. He was increasingly given Roman elite status, and shrouded in purple robes like the emperors with orb and scepter in hand. As for luxury arts, manuscript illumination on vellum and parchment emerged from the 5th century, with a few manuscripts of Roman literary classics like the Virgilius Vaticanus and the Virgilius Romanus, but increasingly Christian texts, of which Quedlinburg Atala fragment 420 is the oldest survivor. Carved ivory diptychs were used for secular subjects, as in the imperial and consular diptychs presented to friends, as well as religious ones, both Christian and pagan. They seem to have been especially a vehicle for the last group of powerful pagans to resist Christianity, as in the late 4th century Simachi Nicomachi diptych. Extravagant hoards of silver plate are especially common from the 4th century, including the Mildenhall treasure, Esquiline treasure, Hoxna hoard, and the imperial missorium of Theodosius I. Topic. Literature Topic. In the field of literature, late antiquity is known for the declining use of classical Greek and Latin, and the rise of literary cultures in Syriac, Armenian, Georgian, Ethiopic, Arabic, and Coptic. It also marks a shift in literary style, with a preference for encyclopedic works in a dense and elusive style, consisting of summaries of earlier works anthologies, epitomes, often dressed up in elaborate allegorical garb e.g., De Nuptiis Mercurii et Philologia The Marriage of Mercury and Philology of Martianus Capella and the De Arithmetica, De Musica, and De Consolation Philosophiae of Boethius, both later key works in medieval education. The 4th and 5th centuries also saw an explosion of Christian literature, of which Greek writers such as Eusebius of Caesarea, Basil of Caesarea, Gregory of Nazianus and John Chrysostom and Latin writers such as Ambrose of Milan, Jerome and Augustine of Hippo are only among the most renowned representatives. On the other hand, authors such as Ammianus Marcellinus 4th century and Procopius of Caesarea 6th century were able to keep the tradition of classical historiography alive. Topic. Poetry Topic. Greek poets of the late antique period included Antoninus Liberalis, Quintus Smyrnaeus, Nonnus, Romanus the Melodist and Paul the Silentiary. Latin poets included Ausonius, Paulinus of Nola, Claudian, Rutilius Nematianus, Orientius, Sidonius Apollinaris, Corippus and Orator. Jewish poets included Yanai, Eliezer ben Killer and Yos ben Yos. Topic. Basic timeline Topic. 285, Emperor Diocletian splits the Roman Empire into Eastern and Western Empires 313, Edict of Milan legalized Christianity throughout the Roman Empire, and thus ended the previous state-sanctioned persecution of Christians there 378, Battle of Adrianople, Roman army under Eastern Roman Emperor Valens is defeated by the Germanic tribes. 395, Roman Emperor Theodosius I outlaws all pagan religions in favor of Christianity. 410, Alaric Isaacs Rome for the first time since 390 BC. 451, Battle of the Catalaunian Plains, the Hunnic Confederation and an alliance of Western Romans and Visigoths fight to a draw. 476, Romulus Augustus, last Western Roman emperor is forced to abdicate by Odaacer, a half-Hunnish and half-Syrian chieftain of the Germanic Heruli. Odaacer returns the imperial regalia to Eastern Roman Emperor Zeno in Constantinople in return for the title of Dukes of Italy. Traditionally, the most frequently cited date for the end of the Roman Empire although the Eastern Roman Empire, based in Constantinople, would still continue to exist until 1453. 529, the Eastern Roman Emperor Justinian I ordered the prominent philosophical schools of antiquity throughout the Eastern Roman Empire including the famous Academy in Athens, among others, to close down, allegedly, because Justinian frowned upon the pagan nature of these schools. 634, the rise of Islam. Topic. See also. Topic. Byzantine Empire Peter Brown 
Fall of the Western Roman Empire Early Middle Ages Migration period Roman-Persian Wars Notes References Perry Anderson, Passages from Antiquity to Feudalism, NLB, London, 1974. Peter Brown, The World of Late Antiquity, From Marcus Aurelius to Muhammad, AD 150-750, Thames and Hudson, 1989, ISBN 0-393-95803-5. Peter Brown, Authority and the Sacred, Aspects of the Christianization of the Roman World, Routledge, 1997, ISBN 0-521-59557-6 Peter Brown, The Rise of Western Christendom, Triumph and Diversity 200-1000 AD, Blackwell, 2003, ISBN 0-631-22138-7 Henning Borm, Westrom Von Honorius bis Justinian, Kohlhammer, 2013, ISBN 978-3-17-023276-1, Review in English. Averill Cameron, The Later Roman Empire, AD 284-430, Harvard University Press, 1993, ISBN 0-674-51194-8 Averill Cameron, The Mediterranean World in Late Antiquity AD 395-700 Routledge 2011, ISBN 0-415-01421-2 Averill Cameron et al., Editors, The Cambridge Ancient History, Vols. 12-14, Cambridge University Press 1997 FF. Gillian Clark, Late Antiquity, A Very Short Introduction, Oxford University Press, 2011, ISBN 978-0-19-954620-6 John Curran, Pagan City and Christian Capital, Rome in the Fourth Century, Clarendon Press, 2000. Peter Dinzelbacher and Werner Heinz, Europa in der Spatentique, Primus, 2007. Fabio Gasti, Profilo Storico della Letteratura Tardolatina, Pavia University Press, 2013, ISBN 978-88-96764-09-1. Tomas Hag, ed., So Debate, The World of Late Antiquity Revisited, in Symboli Osloenses, 72, 1997. Scott F. Johnson ed., The Oxford Handbook of Late Antiquity, Oxford University Press, 2012, ISBN 978-0-19-533693-1 Arnold H. M. Jones, The Later Roman Empire, 284-602, A Social, Economic and Administrative Survey, Vols. I. 2, University of Oklahoma Press, 1964. Kitzinger, Ernst, 1977. Byzantine Art in the Making, Main Lines of Stylistic Development in Mediterranean Art, 3rd-7th Century. Faber & Faber. ISBN 0-571-11154-8. Bertrand Lankin, Rome in Late Antiquity, AD 313-604, Routledge, 2001. Doug Lee, Pagans and Christians in Late Antiquity, A Sourcebook, Routledge, 2000. Noel Lenski, ed., The Cambridge Companion to the Age of Constantine, Cambridge University Press, 2006. Samuel N. C. Lou and Dominic Montserrat, eds., From Constantine to Julian, Pagan and Byzantine Views, A Source History, Routledge, 1996. Michael Moss, ed., The Cambridge Companion to the Age of Justinian, Cambridge University Press, 2005. Robert Marcus, The End of Ancient Christianity, Cambridge University Press, 1990. Ramsey McMullen, Christianizing the Roman Empire AD 100-400. Yale University Press, 1984. Stephen Mitchell, A History of the Later Roman Empire. AD 284-641, Blackwell, 2006. Michael Rostovtsev, Rev. P. Fraser, The Social and Economic History of the Roman Empire, Oxford, 1979. Johannes Wienand, ed., Contested Monarchy. Integrating the Roman Empire in the 4th Century AD, Oxford, 2015. Topic external links Topic New Advent, The Fathers of the Church, a Catholic website with English translations of the early Fathers of the Church. 
Orb Encyclopedia's section on Late Antiquity in the Mediterranean from Orb Overview of Late Antiquity, from Orb Princeton, Stanford Working Papers in Classics, a collaborative forum of Princeton and Stanford to make the latest scholarship on the field available in advance of final publication. The End of the Classical World, Source Documents from the Internet Medieval Sourcebook Worlds of Late Antiquity, from the University of Pennsylvania Age of Spirituality, Late Antique and Early Christian Art, 3rd to 7th century from the Metropolitan Museum of Art